Okay, guys, it is time to talk about circular motion, uh, specifically uh, circular motion that has to do with roller coasters. So we talked about this in class, and uh, I wanted to make sure that after you've had a little bit of time to think about it, uh, that we can really kind of get into it a little bit more now. Uh, remember that what we were doing in class was seeing what everyone had for ideas. Now, some of the ideas that came up were right, some of them were wrong. Uh, we were just going along with the flow of what everybody thought. Now, there were a few interesting things pointed out. And now what I want to do is just use this video as sort of a, a resource so you can come back to this and make sure that you understand uh, the ideas behind this a lot better. So, let's take a look at this. Here I got... A, uh, a guy, I guess it's not really a roller coaster you're seeing, but this guy is moving in a circle uh, of some radius R. We don't really know what the radius is right now, but we have an idea about kind of what he's doing at some sort of speed. So we're just going to look at the general equations used at certain points. We, we know that uh, we have them at the bottom, at the top, we have them at 90 degrees, so in other words, he's he's completely uh, horizontal at one point, and then we have him over on the left here, over here, at a certain angle. So we're going to look at all of these, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, when we look at these carefully, we can kind of understand a little bit more about what we're trying to do. So I think the um, easiest one to start with is is when he's on the bottom. So I think the important thing here to realize is that you have a tangential velocity. So in every single one of these cases, he is moving probably either directly to the right in this case, or if he's on the side, he's moving directly up. And if he's at the very top, he's moving to the left. Uh, now let's just think about what it feels like, what it feels like for someone at each of these points. Now, maybe you can remember last time you were in a ro roller coaster, and you can get an idea about what might be happening as far as the forces involved. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to make a little free body diagram over this guy. And a few of the things we talked about here I think we were right about. Now, when we drew this, we said, well, there is, we have a force of gravity. A force of gravity pointing down. And we do know that when you're at the bottom of a curve, let's uh, just picture yourself now. You've been flying down uh, the hill here the curve and then you're at the bottom and you might notice that when you're at the bottom it actually feels like you're pressing deeper into your seat than you normally would if you were just simply sitting there so why is that well it's because remember always that you need to have and i think this was brought up in class you need to have an unbalanced force which means yes there's a normal force but the normal force must be, must be, greater than the force of gravity. Because I need to have a force that is making me go in this circle. So one of the important things to realize is that in this case, the centripetal force is an unbalanced force. I am accelerating towards the middle. Towards the middle, and by the middle I mean towards the center of my curve, the center of the circle about which I'm moving. So, just so it's clear, let's just include this here while we're at it. We're, we're, we have a velocity going this way. Now, a lot of you said things along the lines of, well, there's also a friction, there's a few other things happening. Um, now, at this moment, there should be no need of friction. We have all of our forces pointing down. And I have my force, uh, my normal force, which is greater than my force of gravity pointing up. Now, exactly what is that normal force and how do we work it out? So let's just think about this. If I was going to, I'm going to just erase this now for a second, this guy over here, and I just get rid of that. But what I want to look at is that, what is my centripetal force? What is it? Now, you might say, well, it's the normal force, but... It's not actually completely my normal force. It is whatever force is pointing towards the center. Now, let's just think about this now. Exactly what is making that? Well, this is going to be, I'm going to just make this here as my net force. My net force is going to look something like this. This is F net. 
And how did I get F net? Well, let's just look at that. My net force in this case, and uh, while I'm at it, I'm, I'm doing it entirely in my y direction, is going to be equal to my normal force minus my force of gravity, or the, the weight I feel. And this is going to be my centripetal force. So this will actually be equal to my centripetal force. This is the force that's required to keep me in a circle. If I wasn't moving in a circle, my normal force would be equal to my force of gravity. But in this case, it isn't. They're, e they're not actually equal. I have an unbalanced force. So if I look at this, well, what is my normal force? How does it work? Well, let's, uh, let's move a few things around. My normal force in this case must be equal to my centripetal force plus my force of gravity. Let's fill in a few things here. Centripetal force, what is that? Well, we know what that is. We know the equation for this. It's mass times the velocity squared all over the radius of the circle. And I know my force of gravity, that is m. G. So this is actually what my normal force is. If I know what the radius is, and I know the speed, the velocity at which I am moving around the circle, that is telling me what the centripetal force, I am adding that to my force of gravity. And this is, this part here, this, this extra piece right here, is what is providing me with this, this feeling, this feeling I have while I'm sitting there in my roller coaster, why I feel like I'm suddenly being pressed down into my seat. It's coming from this other amount here. This is why my normal force is so much bigger. By the way, something to think about too is what does this feel like? We talk about how this feels, and so when we talk about this, uh, sometimes when it's described, we ask ourselves, how many, how many G's? Now, what is a G? So I'm just little quotations here. How many G's? This means, uh, basically, uh, we use this term when we talk about uh, airline pilots, uh, people who are in jets, and we say, well, they're experiencing, they're experiencing, uh, experiencing a a gravity or feeling a, a I should say a force a force of gravity that feels what I, how could I say this that feels a, what would be the right way of saying it it is several times stronger than normal gravity normal g negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So how do I get this? How many g's? How many g's? Well, if you want to know how to get that, all I really need to do is I have my centripetal acceleration and I divide by through the gravitational acceleration. This should give me. So that, that gives you an idea about how many g's I'm feeling. Now, this actually is done by uh, fighter pilots to test if they can handle it when they do, say, very sharp dives, and then they have to pull up really fast. Now, say they're coming down at an incredible speed, and then they pull up. Doing that, they're increasing their weight. They're increasing the feeling of weight, because remember, that's the normal force. Their, their actual weight is still the force of gravity. It doesn't really change. But when we talk about the weight of someone, we're actually talking about the normal force, the feeling of pressure on them. So in this case, uh, my normal force is actually larger than the force of gravity. I feel heavier. I have a certain number of G's I'm feeling. Now, in this case, maybe this number is not very big, and so maybe it's not actually even twice as big as the force of gravity. That can happen. Uh, but you can go up pretty high, okay? But as soon as you're doing something on the level of 4 to 5 G's, you're really getting possibly hurt. The fluid in your brain actually will move to the back of your head. You will probably go unconscious. There's a few things that can happen there. So anyway, that is the feeling you have at the bottom. Now let's just go through this on a few other cases. Let's look at the case of someone at the top. Now we were talking about this 
And you say, well, what are the different forces happening here? Okay, let's take a look. What do we got? Well, as always, and rightfully so, we said we have the force of gravity. But what else do we have here? What else do we have? Well, we talked about the normal force, and the question is, is what way is this pressing? Now, it depends upon how you look at it, and it depends upon how you feel this person should be experiencing the pressure from the chair. Now, technically, let's just say that no matter what, the chair must be pressing on the man. He feels a pressure from the chair. But now picture how you feel when you are in the air like that. When you're up in the air, what does that actually feel like? So now let's look at the equation here. I have a centripetal force. And that is going to be equal to what? Well, it's equal to the force of gravity. And I'm going to be, in this case, adding my normal force. Okay, this looks pretty similar to what we did before. What did we do before? Let's take a look quickly there. Oh, can't really see it. Sorry. Let's go back to it. There we go. The only difference is that now I'm actually, instead of subtracting, I'm adding the two forces together. So here now I'm adding. So what does this tell me? Well, let's look at what the, for the normal force is. What does this feel like? What is the pressure I feel? Well, now this is going to be my centripetal force minus my force of gravity. So I'm going to have mv squared again over r minus mg. It's going to be a little different. But this brings to mind something that we have to ask ourselves. Well then, what exactly can I get away with to go in a circle? I'm moving around a circle and if my centripetal force uh, Yes, it can keep me in a circle, but at what point am I no longer able to do the circle? What is the critical... Let's ask ourselves this. What is the critical velocity? Because we all know at some point, I'm not actually going to be able to just stay up there. I'm actually going to fall. So what would that be? What would that actually be? So why don't you just think about that for a moment, and I'm going to continue in one second. Okay, let's just look at that equation. If my velocity is too small, so we're talking about if my velocity is too small, then what I'm saying is basically that this will reach a point where it is less than the force of gravity. Now, if it's less than the force of gravity, in other words, if mv squared over r is less than mg, what happens? Well, quite simply, my force, my normal force, is negative. What does that mean? What does a negative normal force mean? Well, if you think about it, normal force is the pressure I'm feeling from the seat, which should be a positive value. So if it is negative, what that means is that I'm not touching the seat anymore. I'm falling out of my seat. I don't want that. That means the force of gravity is overtaking everything, and I am just simply falling. I need to have a somewhat of a balanced force up here. And this is my critical point. Everywhere else, I can probably be able to handle it pretty good. Down at the bottom, even if I'm going too slow, well, I can stay along that circle because I'm basically being pushed up by the seat but up at the top this is not quite the case so i need to have a minimum velocity where mv squared over r is equal to mg at which point i'm going to have a normal force of zero which is okay it's not great but it's okay and you might notice that when you're in roller coasters when you reach the top of a curve you almost feel like you might fall out of your seat 
Uh, hopefully you don't. But you can. So what happens here? Let's take a look at this. So then my critical velocity, well, my, my mass is canceled. Um, I've got V will be equal to G times R square rooted. So if I want to know, this is kind of interesting, if I want to know the minimum, I'm going to call this my minimum velocity, all I need to know is the gravity and the radius. And, well, I assume I already know G, that's 9.8. So 9.8 times the radius, square rooted, gives me the minimum velocity to stay in that circular path. Pretty nice to know. Pretty good to know. Make sure you make a note of this, by the way. Okay, so very quickly, before this video goes on too long, let's talk about the two other things. Now, this is the part that actually um, everybody in the class seemed to understand a lot better. The top and the bottom, we were having a bit of trouble, but let's take a look at this. What happens if I am sitting and I am exactly, um, we're going to just, just take a look at that, I am exactly at 90 degrees here, or rather, I guess, technically I'm at zero degrees zero degrees along the circle okay so here I am at zero degrees what do I got well I still got a force gravity okay it's pointing down that's no good and I think we're talking about this in class yes we must have some sort of uh, normal force pointing this way but I also need I also need to have some force that is pointing in what is that well, in this case, it must be some sort of force that's created by me pushing into the seat. So we're going to have to call that force normal as well. But it's not the same one. So I'll call this force normal 1 and force normal 2. And in this case, it's a little easier because look at this. What is my normal force? Well, I don't have anything else to work with. So it is absolutely equal to my centripetal force. So that means my normal force... It's going to be equal to m v squared over r. Not too big of a deal there. That's actually pretty easy. What you are noticing probably is that um, the actual centripetal force is always the same. However, my normal force, what I feel as far as pressure on my seat goes, is going to be different. But the actual centripetal force is actually always staying the same. It is still mv squared over r. It should always be the same centripetal force all the way around this circle. But the feeling I have while I'm in the seat will change depending upon where I am along the circle, which I think is much more uh, critical to understand here. So let me say it again. The centripetal force does not change. The where it comes from changes and therefore it's going to feel a little different every time. So, in this case, I am going to have a centripetal force. This is, I know this is my centripetal force. What makes it? Well, let's go through all the parts. I have the force of gravity. I must have a force normal. But, let's go through the parts here. What do I got? Well, I'm going to have a little bit of a force of gravity pointing this way. And I'm going to have a little bit of a force of gravity pointing this way. We better call them something. I'll call this force gravity Y and force gravity X. Now when I look at that, uh-oh, what's going on here? What exactly am I feeling at this point? I'm falling. So what needs to balance out here? Somehow... I know my FGY is not necessarily equal to my force normal. In fact, if I had to look at this equation, how do I do this? Let me let me do this up here. My centripetal force is going to be equal to my normal force minus my FGY. Okay. So when we have to look at the FGY, now let's remember we'd have to look at the angle I'm at. We have to find a, something that makes me uh, have a good equation for the FGY. i got to take in sine or cosine of the angle, blah, blah, blah. Not much I need to know because we're going to have roughly the same thing. But now FGY is not FG, so it is smaller. So ask yourself, what does that do to the normal force then at this angle? 
m v squared over r plus m g and then what what is that well i'll leave that up to you to understand okay but is it sine is it cosine what is it what is fgy i need to do something let's assume that i'm doing it some angle theta so then fgy is what angle think about it for a moment uh, forgive me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's going to be whoops it's a pretty big blotchy thing there let me just erase that should be sine of theta if i'm wrong let me know i don't want to be wrong in this case but i have a smaller amount of gravity there involved in uh working with my normal force so i have to consider what's happening here okay how am i getting uh this centripetal force here i am losing some of it from the gravitational force okay but it is a smaller amount so think about what that probably does to everything but one thing i haven't thought about here is that i do have this little fgx so this is not in the direction of the centripetal force this force must be balanced out or I'm falling out of my chair, which means there must be some force here. What is it? What is keeping me from falling? Now, perhaps you realize what's happening here. It must be equal to some sort of frictional force. Similar to that question we had when we were talking about the CD case flying out the window. So I think that covers us now. What do we got? We got that one. We got that one. We got that one. Wow, what a big mess now. But if you look at all the different force diagrams, I hope that helps you understand what we're looking at here. Anyway, uh, I think that's everything. Hope that helped out, guys.